Hi everyone, welcome back to the Pop Keto Kitchen. Today we are cooking zucchini slice. Hey everyone, welcome to the Pop Keto Kitchen. Now depending on where you're from in the world, you're gonna call this either zucchini slice or courgette slice. Either way, it's delicious. Now, if you've watched a few of our videos so far, hopefully you've enjoyed them. What we'd love you to do is subscribe to the channel. There's a big red button just there. If you could press that, that would be brilliant and you'll find out whenever we put out our new videos, which we're doing weekly. This recipe we're doing today, courgette zucchini slice. Now, in our last few videos, we've been putting the approximate nutritional information down in the video description section. Now, we're doing the best we can to get that as accurate as we can. If you have any suggestions on how we can do that more accurately, we'd love to hear from you. Cool. So, on to today's recipe. This is a great recipe. This recipe was actually given to us by my mother-in-law, who is back in Australia, and hopefully we'll get to watch this. Hi. She used to make a version of this for us and the kids when we were in Australia. Uh, and since then, we've gone keto. We've updated the recipe so it's more keto. Now the macros on this are not exact, but they're pretty darn close. So this is a great meal to have up your sleeve. The recipe we're doing today makes eight portions and let's get into it. So first of all, we have three large courgettes or zucchinis that we've grated. Uh, we couldn't find large ones, so we've used four smaller ones, but it's the same result there. And to that, we're adding one tablespoon of salt. Just gonna sprinkle that over. And we're gonna mix that through. Now the reason for the salt here is that it's going to take some of the moisture out of the zucchini. And we're going to let it sit for a little while and you'll see when we come back to it, all the liquid that's going to come out. And we're going to put that into a strainer. And we're going to set this aside while we prepare the rest of the bit. Okay, next we are turning on the frying pan and what we're going to put in there is two slices of bacon. We are using a nitrate free bacon. And we just want to get a good bit of color on that. And hopefully render a little bit of the fat. Now I had hoped that a little more fat would come out of that, but it hasn't. So I'm just going to add just a, a teaspoon of olive oil. And to this we're now going to add one whole chopped onion. We want to get that mixed through, taking on some of the bacon flavors, but we also want to see it getting translucent. We're not necessarily wanting to get color on this. Cool, that's really all we're looking for there. So I'm going to put that aside and move on to the next bit. So the last thing we do before we start putting it all together is that we're going to grease the pan. I like to just take the butter and do this. And then again, we can put that aside as well. All right, now we're gonna start putting it all together. You can see that the zucchini here has been dripping away and you can see there's a fair amount of moisture that's come out of there. We're gonna squeeze the rest of the moisture out as we put the zucchini into the next bowl. All right, you can see how much liquid we have lost just by squeezing it out of there, which I've just done by hand. And this all goes to prevent the slice from becoming soggy. All right, so to our grated zucchini, we are now going to add our bacon and onion. And stir that through. Would have been more helpful to have broken up the squished zucchini when I finished with that, but we can do that now as well. Now we're adding five eggs. And again, just getting them stirred all the way through. Next, one cup of almond flour and one teaspoon of baking powder. As always, we're using gluten-free baking powder. Again, stir all the way through. Next, we're adding half a cup of olive oil, which is another good fat. Good crack of pepper. I don't know, maybe that's half a teaspoon. And our last ingredient is cheese. Now this is two cups of cheese. We're gonna put half of this in there now. So one cup of cheese in there now, and we're gonna put one cup over the top of it once we've got it in their baking dish. And that's the last ingredient to stir in. Bringing back our greased baking tray, we're gonna add the whole mixture in.
flatten it out. And sprinkle over the remaining cheese. All right, that is ready to go into the oven now, and we've been preheating that to 180 degrees. Probably only go in there for about 40 minutes. All right, let's get out of the oven. Oh, how look at that. See how it's all still hot and oozy at the sides. What's not to like? As you can see, it's risen a little bit, which is great. It's perfect. It's what we're looking for. And then we'll cut it up in a second and show you what it looks like on the inside. Okay, and I said before that this is eight portions, so I'm just going to chop it up into eight bits. I'm just going to pull out this corner bit here to show you what it's like. So that's it there, you can see a nice little eggy bit and a zucchini, bacon and a golden crispy cheesy crust. Cool, so I'm going to share this piece with Lisa and so I'll get her to come in. Hello. Hello. Have a fork. Perfect. And this is the zucchini slash courgette slice. Perfect. So we really love this uh, for uh, school lunches or any lunches really, so we can portion it out as Sean has done put it in the freezer. It's great just to have on hand if you need a quick meal. It might be a light dinner that you want to have as well. So yeah, we really love this dish. And this has been adapted from a non-keto recipe. Mm. So there are ways to take mm. recipes that you have enjoyed before keto yeah. and changing them to be keto friendly. Yeah, no, this is so yummy. This is amazing. Oh, just like when kiss eat the whole thing now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. Once we've cut it up, we'll also put it in the freezer at times, just so yeah. that we have an emergency meal there if we need it for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. um, take it for lunch. It's great on its own with a salad, mm -hmm. and you can have it cold. It's it's great cold as well. Actually, once it's cooled and and it you know refrigerated, actually, the, I think the flavour actually comes through really well when it's actually quite cool. So you can lightly heat it if you want to. But yeah, having a cold, perfect. So even if you're doing a road trip or a day trip out, it's perfect to take to have on the go as well. All right, thanks everyone. So as I said before, down in the description, you're gonna find a list of ingredients for it. You're also gonna find the macros that we've got there. And this is actually really good macro-wise. It's not perfect, but it's pretty close. Yeah. So thanks for watching. As always, we'd love you to give it a like, share it with your friends, and as I said before, if you are enjoying what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone, see Bye. you next time. Oh, and special mention to Lisa's mum who gave us this recipe originally. <laughs> Bye! Bye!